Hi there, and a very warm welcome to my quick tip. This week, we are going to talk about motion blur in connection to instances and render instances. I noticed some time back that a lot of my projects that I heavily use render instances have a wrong motion blur. And in this video, I'm talking about how you can fix this so you're getting the right motion blur even though you're using render instances that are good to reduce your scene resources, mainly your VRAM usage. As the days get shorter and the leaves are turning brown, I am very tired today, so let's make this an information-driven short one. Here we go. As almost always, I've created a scene here, and if we press play, you can see there are some spheres jumping around to create a motion blur. And the way I created the scene was very simple. I've used a cloner to get this pattern and a step effector to get the staggered look here. And then I used the bullet dynamics, which I've cached to get the animation or the simulation going inside of here. It's always a good idea to cache your simulations to make sure your renders matches the preview. On Octane site, there are two things you need to do to enable motion blur. One thing is to give your objects that are moving an Octane object tag. And inside of the object tag, there is already the motion blur set to transform. If you have objects that have meshes moving within themselves, you need the transform vertex. But since we have objects where only the matrices is moving, transform will do just fine. The second thing you will need to set up is on our camera, the Octane camera tag. Inside of the camera tag, also in the motion blur directory, you have to enable the motion blur here. And allow me to go on a quick tangent. Usually the motion blur should be half the shutter of your frame rate. So in this case, a 50th of a second with my 25 frames per second. And there's a very easy formula to get the right amount in here. So you divide one, that is one second, by double your frame rate. So I have a 25 frames per second frame rate. So I want to divide it by 50. And this gives us a 0.02 second shutter. And this is the right 180 degree shutter that you usually would use for a project. If you go for a 30 FPS frame rate, you would need to divide one by 60, so double 30 FPS is 60 FPS, and this would be your 180 degree shutter for your 30 FPS frame rate. But since we want to have a bit of a longer uh, motion blur here in our project, we are going with a 360 degree shutter. So we are dividing one by the original frame rate, which is 25. So we are getting 0.04. All right, let's go on. First of all, let's go in our layers and disable the parts of the hierarchy we don't need for our project. So we end up with only the cloner and the sphere. If I go back to attributes and activate the cloner, you can see that the instance mode is set to instance. That means if we convert the cloner by hitting C on the keyboard, you can see that every single sphere is its own object. And Cinema 4D, as well as Octane, the renderer, is seeing those individual objects for their tasks. So if I now go back and redo our conversion here, and then hit Render, you can see what's happening with the motion blur. If we now let that play in our picture viewer, you can see that everything is working great and it's looking fine and the motion blur actually is correct since Cinema 4D and the renderer is seeing every object as their own and therefore producing the right motion blur. Let's go back to the project and do some changes. So we click on the cloner and instead of the instance, we set that to render instance. Now let's convert the cloner again by hitting C. And we can see now we have one sphere and the rest of the objects are instances set to render instances, which are referencing the sphere. Let's see how this behaves with our renderings here. Undo the conversion again and hit render. 
So let's play this now and see what has happened with this rendering. You can see there's some glitchiness going on. And if we look at this frame by frame, you can see that the motion blur is wrong for some of the spheres here. So for example, this in the foreground, you can see that the motion blur is much too large for its speed and actually goes in the wrong direction. It should be straight down, but it's like diagonal. And also if it hits the floor, it sort of moves upwards, but the motion blur always points in the wrong direction. So there's something going on here that is not quite right. If we go to our cloner one more time and convert it, I think the problem lies within the movement of the objects. So the sphere here, the original master, is moving, and while it's moving, it gets referenced by other moving objects. And therefore, somehow Octane doesn't like that. So of course, there's a fix for that. And the fix is taking the main object, so the master object, out of the equation of the movement. But taking that out, of course, leaves us with no object in our cloner. So what we need to do is to clone this sphere as an instance by its own. So let's make an instance of the sphere and actually trigger the render instance button here and then move it back into the cloner. Now what Octane doesn't like is nested instances. So right now we have a render instance in a render instance and Octane wouldn't want that to render, I can tell you. But since we already have a render instance here, we don't need to make that double. We just can instance our render instance. So if I hit C one more time here, you can see the cloner is now populated with instances all set to render instance. And this is essentially what we need to do. So let's go back a couple of steps one more time and then hit render one more time. And if we are now pressing play, we are uh, back to our old motion blur behavior, the right one, the good one. Since the main object isn't moving, you have the right motion blur on every instance with the benefit of the object only being loaded once in our RAM or VRAM. So you're saving resources on your scene. Now there's one disadvantage and you probably already spotted it. The main sphere is not moving and it's sitting in our scene. So what can we do? Back in the day when I did the research for the getting the right motion blur, I thought I was clever. Since turning off the sphere in the project turns off all the spheres that are referenced, I thought I was clever by giving it inside of a null object and turning off the null object. So this one will turn off its children, but keep everything that is referenced to it alive. Now watch what happens if I render this. So if we are going to play this now, you can see it completely freaks out and it's even much worse than the old wrong motion blur behavior that we got. This can easily break a rendering if you're rendering out like this. So it is not recommended to turn off objects that are referenced and motion blurred in your scene. Coming back to the project, clicking on sphere instance, you can see there's actually another option. This is multi instance, but I recommend you never to use that, at least until the code is revisited. So in Cinema 4D 2023, if I would click that, Cinema 4D would freeze immediately. And in other versions of Cinema 4D where it would run, I never got motion blur running on it. And actually it seems to have some problems with movement. So unless you have a static geometry that you are cloning static clones on, I would uh, refrain from using that ever. And to sum up everything, let's have a look at my Game Boy project once more, where I show you the workflow I always use in such projects. 
This is the animation scene of my Game Boy project and if I move forward to the animation you can see the project is comprised of a lot of elements here. Uh, if we go to our PCB shot you can see that a lot of those elements are the same and actually are cloned. So if I click on one of these and click S you can see those are render instances. And to make them work with all the movements inside of here uh, I need to go out of the camera and actually show you the project. So right down here, this is not the actual Game Boy that we just saw. This is the original object here. So everything you can see up here is just cloned and the originals reside in a part of the scene where the camera never looks at. So you can see all the PCB components and you can see the hull and everything so those are the non-moving, non-animated original objects. And up here, those are all the cloned objects that then have the right motion blur, even when set to render instance. So as always, I really hope that gave you a good overview over what to do to get the motion blur working with instances. So that helps you to get your scene or keep your scene quite compact while having it look very complex without the loss of good motion blur. If you have any ideas for future tutorials, please write them in the comments. If you have any other suggestions I could do, also write it in the comments. Thank you for sticking with me till the end. That leaves me with my usual words. Have a nice week and happy blurring. Bye.